So in today's video, I'm gonna- Oh. Okay. So for today's video, I wanted to do something nobody has ever done before, which is making Minecraft. Minecraft has always been one of my favorite games to play when I'm just trying to relax and explore a massive world. And as a game developer, Minecraft is a brilliant breakthrough for voxel games, so I've always been interested in trying to recreate it. So the goal for this video is to take this and recreate it inside of Unreal Engine 5. My journey with recreating Minecraft began when I created a mini version for a programming midterm using OpenGL. But this was created in like 3 hours, so with an entire week, I'm sure I can make something a lot better. The main challenge will be to create a voxel system which can be used to create chunks which will make up our infinite terrain. Voxels are basically like pixels, but instead of having a 2D coordinate, it'll have a 3D coordinate. Each of these voxels store information such as what type of block is stored in it, such as grass, dirt, or stone. Minecraft is made up of these 16x16x256 16 by 16 by chunks. The world is split into these chunks so it's easier to spawn in and out chunks which are no longer in render range. Spawning in a bunch of cubes to make up this chunk is super easy, but it's not a good idea when considering performance. So instead of rendering all faces of the cube, we render out only the ones which should be visible to the world. So this is how our chunk currently looks. Now obviously this is nowhere near what chunks look like in Minecraft, so in order to make our chunk look more interesting, we'll need to sculpt it to have some more variation with hills. We can create this variation by using Perlin Noise. Perlin Noise helps us create interesting variation without repetition. Now just looking at this texture doesn't help us visualize how exactly we can sculpt our chunk, so we can use a one-dimensional view of Perlin Noise to give us a better idea. So as you can see, we get some really nice hills with varying heights, while also remaining completely seamless. Using the coordinates of each block, we can extract a noise value from the Perlin Noise which we can use as a Z offset. This will create some hills and get us closer to where we'd like to be. Now currently, the hill isn't very high and would probably look a little nicer once we spawn in more chunks, but Minecraft is more than just having hills, and there's a bunch of blocks being spawned in below these hills that have nothing going on. This is why we'll need to use 3D Perlin Noise instead. Using 3D Perlin Noise is basically the same as 2D Noise, but instead of using it to offset the height of the blocks, we'll use it to smoothly determine where blocks will be created. This will give us some caves all throughout the chunk. Later on we can have some more control over how big these caves are, but we have a bit of a problem. Before we had some nice variation at the top of the chunk, but no caves. Now we have nice caves, but no variation at the top. So we'll need a way to combine these two methods. In order to do this, we'll use a curve which will adjust the Perlin noise value based on the Z value of the block. The idea is that the lower the blocks are, the more blocks will be spawned in. The higher they are, the less they will be spawned in. Using this curve, we'll get this. Now the way we're spawning in these blocks is already pretty performant since we're only showing the faces that should be visible. But there's a mesh optimization technique that can greatly reduce how many vertices are in a chunk. This technique is called greedy meshing. The idea behind greedy meshing is pretty simple. It looks through the neighboring blocks and checks if it can combine faces. There's a few resources that I used to help me figure this out, which saved me a ton of time, so I'll link those down in the description. If you've been paying attention to this animation, you can get a visual idea of how beneficial greedy meshing can be. To show you further just how much of a difference it can make, we can compare this example to how it would look without greedy meshing. So let's see the difference it can make on our chunk that we've currently made. Now our chunk looks exactly the same as it did before, which is a good thing, but we can't really tell if our greedy mesh algorithm is doing anything. Maybe we'll be able to tell if we can compare the chunk we had before to the one we have now, side by side. Alright, we definitely can't see a difference, which is still very much a good thing. So let's add some text which will show us how many vertices are in each chunk. Okay, so the difference between the two in vertices is pretty ridiculous, which is why greedy meshing is such a huge addition but I could have easily just typed in two random values to prove a point. So let's see how they look in wireframe mode. Alright, now we're absolutely certain that it's doing the trick, but just looking at them side by side is crazy. Now that we have the general shape of the terrain, we can work on creating infinite terrain. The main problem we'll run into while spawning in multiple chunks is that it can greatly reduce your FPS when loading in new chunks. A popular solution for this is using multi-threading. Multi-threading allows you to perform heavy calculations away from the game thread so that it won't affect your game's performance. So as it currently stands, all of our calculations are being performed on the game thread. We don't need to do every single calculation on a separate thread, only the ones that will severely disrupt the game. 
we can create a new thread in Unreal Engine using the F runnable class. With this, when we run the two threads simultaneously, it allows us to create the new blocks without much of a hitch. We can combine multi-threading with a queue system which will determine how many chunks will be spawned in on a timer. We now have a performant method of creating our world. As you can see at the top right, we're maintaining a solid FPS all throughout the loading process. We can now move on to adding additional features to the terrain such as water and trees. To make it easier on myself, I'm just going to define a constant height where water will be spawned. Then we'll sprinkle in the trees randomly all throughout the world, and with both of those, our chunks are close to being finished. Minecraft doesn't just generate the same world over and over, so we'll need to add in a bit of randomness. We can easily add in a random offset to our noise value which will give us unique terrains every time. Now you've probably noticed that none of the blocks are textured. I've avoided this problem for quite a bit now because texturing greedy meshes is a bit more complicated than you would normally texture it. Since the faces are stretched out, we can't really define a simple offset which would be used to determine which texture to use in a texture atlas. So after a bit of searching, I realized I could use Unreal's World Align Texture Material Expression and modify it to crop out the selected tile from the atlas and only repeat the cropped version. We'll need a way to send the tile offset to the shader though, so we can use a neat little trick to do this. We can set the vertex colors of each quad which can contain the tiled offset using the R and G values. We can then get this in our material shader and send it to our new World Align Texture Expression. The method I used to crop out the texture from the atlas is really ugly. I honestly don't even know how to explain how I did it, but it works. But with this, we now have a fully textured world. The last piece of functionality left on our plate is adding the ability to add and destroy new blocks to our chunks. This can be done by performing a ray cast on a chunk and getting the impact location of the hit. We can then convert this location to a block position, which will allow us to modify the voxel at this location. And finally, we'll add some juice to the game by adding in sound effects, post-processing, some UI, and changing up the lighting. With all of that, we now have our final product. This is supposed to be a creative, peaceful version of Minecraft meant for exploring, and I think it accomplishes just that. If you'd like to play the game, you can download it from the link in the description. I'll let you guys watch the gameplay from here, but thank you guys for watching. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Three hours later.